The announcement of the first two positive cases of COVID-19 in Gaza on March 22nd has rightly set off alarms, particularly among health officials and international health organizations. The two Palestinian men detected with a novel coronavirus infection had recently traveled to Pakistan. They have since been placed in a quarantine facility near the Egyptian border with Gaza. The two individuals were also not allowed to mix with the wider population of Gaza. The Palestinian territory has been under a debilitating blockade since 2006, imposed by both Israel and Egypt. Fears of a deadly outbreak in Gaza had been growing given the extremely frail and insufficient healthcare infrastructure that caters to a population of close to 2 million people. The healthcare system has not only suffered due to the brutal Israeli-Egyptian blockade of close to 14 years, but has also undergone destruction and massive setbacks during the three Israeli invasions of Gaza in 2008, 2012 and 2014. The resulting destruction of many of Gaza's hospitals and related infrastructure has made it difficult even under normal circumstances for Gazans to access adequate healthcare. This now makes Palestinians in Gaza especially vulnerable to the coronavirus. Another major healthcare issue plaguing Gaza is the shortage of essential and life-saving medical equipment and medicines, mainly due to Israeli restrictions on the movement of goods through the Israel-Gaza border. This is compounded by the restrictions of the Gaza-Egypt border imposed by the Egyptian government of Abdel Fateh al-Sisi. Palestinian health ministry sources have recently said that there is a massive shortage of ventilators and intensive care unit beds in Gaza. The current count of 56 ventilators and 40 ICU beds can at most be increased to 100 beds for dealing with emergency situations. The Gaza Strip also suffers from a shortage of electricity, averaging between 4 to 6 hours per day because of Israel's destruction of its power plants, as well as the lack of adequate fuel supply to keep generators running at hospitals for medical treatment. WHO and the UN have both raised these concerns and called for the State of Israel to immediately lift the air, sea and land blockade on Gaza to help avert a catastrophic human disaster. The territory also faces a shortage of qualified doctors, besides lacking vital supplies of necessary medical equipment such as disinfectant sprays, testing kits, protective masks and suits that can help control the spread of the virus. Under international law, Israel is obligated to help the health ministry in Gaza to treat and control the potential outbreak. The violent repression against the Great March of Return protests that the Palestinians had embarked on since March 2018 has also added burden on Gaza's already under pressure hospitals and medical centers. The number of injuries inflicted by Israeli forces through live and rubber coated metal bullets, tear gas canisters, water cannons on Palestinian protesters has strained the hospitals and medical personnel. Around 25,000 injured men, women, and children have failed the hospitals. As a result, many hospitals are overcrowded beyond the capacity, with patients lying on stretchers in the corridors and outside the hospital buildings awaiting treatment. The COVID-19 pandemic has killed more than 13,000 people worldwide and infected more than 300,000. A large-scale outbreak in Gaza will spell doom for the extremely vulnerable civilian population, which is already living on the edge of human survival. To help mitigate the impending crisis, Israel must immediately lift its siege on Gaza. The international community and organizations such as WHO, UN and other medical relief organizations must also assist the people of Gaza to prevent the spread of the deadly virus in the occupied Palestinian territory.